And we have more breaking news. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is accused of rape. A lawsuit by R&B singer Cassie claims that she was in a years-long relationship with Combs that also involved beatings. The singer claims Combs trapped her in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. It is over. Cassie standing strong sues Diddy for abusing her. Diddy, the renowned music mogul, is finding himself in some serious hot soup. His former girlfriend and singer Casey has filed a jaw-dropping $30 million lawsuit against him and trust me, the details will leave you speechless. Cassie is suing Diddy for $30 million, accusing him of rape, repeated physical abuse and trafficking. The pair met back in 2005 when Cassie was 19 and the rapper was 36. This began a decade-long on and off relationship. For those of you who may not be familiar with Casey, who was once under Diddy's record label and dated him back in the day. Their relationship didn't stand the test of time and the reasons behind their split remained a misery. However, However, all of that has changed now because Casey has come forward with some explosive claims in her lawsuits. According to the court documents, Casey alleges that when she was just 19 years old, Didi initiated a disturbing pattern of behavior. Trigger warning because this is where things take a dark turn. Now, Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, claims after meeting Diddy in 2005, he began a pattern of control and abuse that included supplying her with drugs, putting hands on her repeatedly, and forcing her to smash a bunch of male escorts while he filmed the encounters like the zesty man that he is. Cassie claims that Diddy forced her to use drugs, engaged in physical altercations with her, and one particular incident cited happened in Los Angeles in 2009. The suit says Diddy became enraged when he saw Casey talking to another talent agent, then pushed her into a car and kicked her repeatedly in the face, making her bleed. According to the suit, Diddy then had his staff bring her to a hotel room to heal for a week, and when she asked to go home to her parents, Diddy refused. The suit says that after seeing the violent repercussions of rejecting Diddy and the extent to which he would isolate her from her support network, Casey felt that saying no to him would cost her something, her family, her friends, her career, or even her life. And though she tried to leave him, he sent his employees to lure her back. And as bad as that sounds, it is nowhere compared to the next allegations because shockingly, Diddy allegedly forced Casey into being with male escorts while he watched and recorded the encounters. According to the suit, she would try and delete videos from these incidents that had been shot on her phone, but Diddy told her he still had access to those videos and on a flight he once made her watch a video she thought he had deleted. Casey's lawsuit takes an even darker turn, revealing that Diddy allegedly continuously and forcefully demanded intimacy from her on top of physically assaulting her. I know many of you are wondering why didn't she just leave. She did try but failed as detailed in her lawsuit which includes several accounts over unsuccessful attempts to escape Diddy's control. In one example, the suit says that during an FO at a Los Angeles hotel in 2016, an intoxicated Diddy punched Casey in the face giving her blood eye. He fell asleep and she tried to leave the room but Diddy woke up and followed her into the hallway where he threw glass vases at her, sending glass shattering throughout the corridor. And to answer the next obvious question about the hotel security cameras that captured that incident, the suit says Diddy paid the hotel $50,000 for the footage. The situation takes an even darker turn because the suit alleges that after Casey broke up with Diddy, she got involved with Kid Cody, who Diddy allegedly threatened to harm, going as far as to threaten to blow up his car. Shockingly, it seems that his threat became a reality as Cutie's PR team confirmed that his car did indeed explode. This escalation of violence is truly shocking. This is beyond disturbing and it is hard to comprehend how someone could do something like this to another human being. It is a lot to process, however, for Casey's part it appears she's done with processing all the violations because she's dead serious about her lawsuit. In her statement, she expressed her determination to finally hold her abuser accountable along with anyone who may have aided him in his alleged actions. She said, after years in silence and darkness, 
I'm finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. With the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I've experienced and that I'll be recovering for the rest of my life. But as expected, in response to her statements and allegations, Didi has denied the allegations made by Casey and has claimed that she's only trying to shake him up for money. His lawyer Ben Braffman said, Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to her persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was an unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threats, Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. Now, I don't know about you, but it's really hard to ignore the fact that Didi recently decided to restrain his artist from speaking anything bad about him. On a recent episode of The Only Stains podcast, Oday voiced concern about the specifics in the deals being offered to Maze, the Locks Faith Evans, the state of the notorious big, and her group Danity Ken saying, I have to sign an NDA that I'll never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Genius Combs, Justin Combs Music, EMI, and Sony ever in public. Ode claimed she received the details of the agreement months ago at the same time that other former Bad Boy artists received similar calls to retrieve their songs rights. Coincidence? I don't think so. It almost seems like he was anticipating Casey's accusations and wanted to control the narrative before it spiraled out of his hands. This move seems suspicious and it's clear that he knew what was coming from Casey and one fan took notice of the sketchy timing saying, This man has been a monster and menace his whole life. His whole campaign to give his artists the opportunity to own their masses was all a ploy to get all his victims to sign NDAs. I'm surprised his attorneys didn't tell him NDAs don't cover illegal acts. That's not the only thing that fans have noticed. It has come to Minnie's attention that Didi has restricted his Instagram comment sections despite having them on right before Casey filed her lawsuit against him. In fact, Combs posted a promo for his new music just hours ahead of the filing with comments pouring in until when the lawsuit first made headlines. And to add to all that suspicion, Douglas Wigdor, a lawyer for Casey, said the parties had spoken before the suit was filed and Didi allegedly tried to bribe her. He said that Didi offered Casey eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of his lawsuit, but she rejected his efforts. Now, here is where things get pretty interesting. Remember when I told you about the kicker? Well, it appears that Casey has settled the suit with Didi. Yeah, you heard that right. It is now settled. The settlement was announced in a statement sent by attorney Douglas Wigdor, who represents Casey. The statement said they had reached a deal to their mutual satisfaction, but no terms of the agreement were disclosed and no further statements would be issued beyond those made by Casey, Didi, and Wigdor in the email contributed by the lawyer. In her statements, Casey said, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans and lawyers for their unwavering support. Didi for his part said, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Casey and her family all the best. Love. Wigdor, Casey's lawyer, in his statement also further added, I'm very proud of Miss Ventura for having the strength to go public with her lawsuit. She ought to be commended for doing so. Given this ugly past and not the bombshell claims, fans aren't as convinced with the new claims of settlement. In fact, they believe that Didi supposedly gave a hefty sum to Casey when commented, Money talks or I guess doesn't talk. Didi has that F.U. money, and I'm sure the longer this went on, it would hurt his image and money. The second hinted, crazy that we'll never know the amount, but I bet you it was a shitload. Yeah, 
it seems pretty transparent that was trying to avoid the legal discovery process especially considering how much would be made public in the course of vids the other also argued if Didi stated this lawsuit with one business day, then he did all that mess. This ninja a real life super villain bra? Now, we want to hear from you two. What are your thoughts on this scandal? Do you believe Casey's claims or do you think she's just after Didi's money? And what do you think this suit was quickly set up? You let us know in the comment an section it's below. It's Share your opinions to this scandal and situation. Yeah. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing updates.